Creative Brain Candy by Creators for Creators. What is this? This? This is home. And where are the crew of the Stargazer? Oh, how quaint. How provincial. How yesterday's enterprise of you. There is no Stargazer. What do you mean? What have you done? Show them a world of their own making and they ask you what you've done. So human of you. You have you had enough of playing games with other people's lives? I am no longer your pawn. Well, you undersell yourself, Jean-Luc. You are more than just a piece. Or you're the very board upon which this game is played. And I am too old for your bullshit. Old, yes. How unfair time is. So many wrinkles. So many disappointments. What do you want, Q? Will you come to the point? You want me to cut to the chase? Yes! For the chase is cut, Picard. The chase is bleeding. The chase is dying in your arms. And I am but a suture in the wound. Are you? Q, you, you are not well. Welcome to Smoking and Drinking in Space. This is a sci-fi podcast from a couple guys who think they know sci-fi. And this week we dive into season two. That's a nostalgia trip for people from the future for the show that explores what a lonely old captain would do during retirement. Starring Sir Lonely Old Captain, Smaller Budgets, and Cross Your Fingers, Space Whales. Come on, Space Whales. It's season two of Star Trek Picard. But first, he's the tiny little dictator who married way above his station. It's Rob. How are you doing, Rob? Tiny little dictator. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not a dictator. Um, my wife is the president. Um, I'm just here to serve my wife. Sure. I'm see service, service my wife. Whatever. Sure. Seven, call me, baby. Yeah, right. Whatever. Hey, look, no Borg implants. It's great. All right. You got any news for us this week? Uh oh! It's just us two. Yeah, it's just us two. SP's off the hook. the The judge Man, said that he had old. served his time and then some. He could actually probably go out and murder somebody and still not serve any time. Probably not. Probably not. Oh damn! You know what? I almost forgot. God damn it! Mm. So, in honor of the fact that we've got some time traveling happening, and we are going back to the good old year twenty twenty four. I have a fudge round, the staple of any good podcast. How many more of those goddamn things do you have left? Mm, I haven't even cracked open the two boxes of oatmeal cream pies you gave oh, me. Fuck. If you were smart, you would have gotten me a shit ton of those jelly filled ones because I was eating those even when we weren't recording because they were so good. Duly noted. But, yep. Duly noted. All right. So I got some sci-fi. Well, I've got some science news for you. You ready? Sure. All right. NASA is going to test a massive slingshot for launching satellites into space. So I saw this, um, um, I'm going to say sometime last year, I saw this company. They put a little um, video out there. Um. And uh, I was like, man, that's kind of cool. Well, now not NASA has jumped in on the bandwagon, and they're actually looking into it. So basically, it is this enormous, like uh, what they call it, a suborbital mass accelerator. Uh, it's larger than the Statue of Liberty, and it uses a rotating carbon fiber arm to launch a vehicle into space. Now, what they're showing in their little um, fancy, um, it's called spin launch. Um, what they're showing in their little uh, fancy video here is it's basically like, um, it's almost like a missile 
that gets launched out. So it's it's small payloads. So it's going to be small satellites. But uh, they get it spinning really, 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 really fast. And then they shoot it out the poop tube and into space. What happens if they, like, miss their mark? Do they just shoot it into uh, somebody's living room? Well, okay, so it's 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 this giant round thing. Um, you know what? Give me a second. I want you to take a look at this, and the listeners can take a look uh, when you look at the show notes that are on there. Basically, it's like a. It looks almost like a, um, almost like a, f- a air fan, um, like an air air filter from uh, like an old car. You know? Oh yeah. It's round, and then it's got the little air intake thing. So basically, it spins around really, really fast, and then shoots it straight up into the air. And then I guess once it leaves or gets to a certain altitude, you know, it, it pops the payload and the satellite puts itself where it needs to be. I mean, that would be my guess. Right. Um, this company, uh, Spin Launch, um, they completed their first test uh, in October of 2021. And that's when they kind of released a video type of deal. Um, so I don't know what they launched. They launched something up there. And apparently it got there, uh, so that be that's kind of interesting, because now you're not beholden to you know rocket fuel, right? And uh, maybe it's a little bit more economical. Who knows? Speaking of rocket fuel, um, NASA's at it again, doing uh, what with their <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. They are at it again on doing nothing because their SLS system. Failed again. <laughs> so uh, they had a, uh, uh, let's see, this was reported on April 14th. Uh, they had to do another test. They had to do a test, a fuel a fuel filling test. Uh, there's three tests that they have to do in order to um, uh, well, validate it or in order for it to pass and then be able to get shot up into space. Okay. Um, yeah, so far they're not doing too good. Uh, they uh, this test that they did, this dress rehearsal that they did, required um, required them to fill the the core stage of the rocket with fuel. Um, they detected a leak of hydrogen, uh, so they had to stop. And now they have to go back to the drawing board in terms of, I think I read uh, yesterday or the day before, that they've uh, they've rolled that bad boy back into the hangar to fix the issues. It's not something that they can fix out there on the thing. Uh, and this is just one of a few things that have marred the, uh, the, the illustrious career of this SLS system. Um, so let's see, there is, there's been two other previous countdown attempts that were, um, aborted, uh, because of a bulky fan, whatever, uh, bulky fan is, uh, I guess an exhaust fan or something like that didn't work. And then a large hand operated valve that some workers accidentally left closed. <laughs> oh my God. So... Um, you know, despite the setbacks, uh, with SpaceX and their Falcon 9 Heavy and their Starship and all that kind of fun stuff, um, there's a pretty good chance that SpaceX will still beat them to space. Right. Because they're not doing too good. Yeah. Interesting. What else you got? Yeah. And then one last thing, this wouldn't be a uh, episode of Saddest if I didn't just bring up um, our good old favorite uh, favorite superhero, The Flash. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Flash. Uh, the Flash star, Ezra Miller, that uh, weird kooky guy. Um, yeah, he got arrested again in Hawaii. Yeah, he seems like a really fucking angry drunk. He is a... He is... Such a stable person, don't you think? No, not when he's drinking, no. at least. No, not at all. Now, even when he isn't drinking, he doesn't seem all there. Um, but yeah, yeah, he got himself a little drunk and uh, then basically, you know, 
and, and this wasn't even in public. This was at a friend's house. Um, got himself drunk. His friend said, dude, chill out, sit down, um, or we're going to ask you to leave. And, um, yeah, he didn't chill out or sit down. So they asked him to lead. Um, so Miller said, okay, and threw a chair at somebody. Jeez. Yeah. He's yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. unhinged. So, yeah. So because of this, um, uh, I guess, second altercation, um, there's word on the street that uh, we be looking for a new Flash. Are they going to keep him in the current movie that he's already filmed? Or? I don't. I don't know because there's also word out there that they want to now that we've got this. Uh, what is it? Discovery and Warner Brother merger mm-hmm. thing happening. Yep. Um, there's there's talk of another reboot. Yeah, they're thinking of redoing or, the DC revamp. Yeah, revamping the yeah. DCEU. Yeah. Yeah, so there's rumors that Henry Cavill is back in talks to play Superman again, and they're looking yeah. for the DCEU equivalent of Kevin Feige, and yeah, yep, because they tried to get Kevin Feige, <laughs> and he has <laughs> and that no wasn't interest in happen. that. Yeah. Now he's like, dude, I'm not getting on that uh, that uh, dumpster fire of a train. So. Uh, yeah, so that's that's great. We might be looking for a new Flash. Uh, there has been people t- out there talking, hey, let's get Grant Gustin in this, uh, oh. who plays the Flash. Uh, he plays the Flash on the CW. Oh, yeah. So they're thinking, okay, you can kind of salvage this by doing a little multiverse type of deal. Because Grant Gustin, is done. Uh, he's got, he got signed up for one more season for the CW. And there's talk about, you know, that stuff might end up getting nixed too because the CW is up for sale. And <laughs> so Warner Brothers is trying whole... to get rid of the CW now. Well, I yeah, I think well, I think it's part of the whole merger thing. I'm I'm not sure what's going on, you know, with the whole Disney Warner Brother merger thing. It's not Disney Discovery. Not Dis Discovery. Sorry, thank you. Um, but there's been. I, I've read a few articles where, like, apparently this either the CW is up for sale, or because of the sale, um, there's some question as to what they're going to do with the CW. Yeah, I don't even think so. Disney could buy Warner Brothers if they wanted to. It would be antitrust it, it, implications there. Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting though. No, competing with yourself, no, it wouldn't. That would be a disaster. <laughs> Oh, it would, would be, be but it'd be fun. It'd be fun to watch. All right. So that's all I got. That's all you got. Well, let's take a listen yeah. to another podcast on the network and see how they're doing. Do you like true crime? Oh my God, Kat, you can't just ask people if they like murder. But I'm curious. Well, curiosity killed the cat. Uh, does that make you curiosity? No, I'm Logan. And I'm Kat. And we're the hosts of the true crime comedy podcast, Spoiler They Die which is part of the Creative Brain Candy Media Cooperative. We release an episode every Monday where one of us tells the other a story about a serial killer, a survivor, or basically anything morbid and scary. You can listen to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and by visiting creativebraincandy.com. We're also active on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can find us by searching Spoiler They Die. Also, we're Canadian, in case that matters to anyone. I don't think people listen to podcasts based on people being Canadian or not. People in our Discord server seem to care. Oh, sorry about that, eh? I'm so sorry you all had to listen to that. But thanks for listening to us panhandle. All right, and you can find them on creativebraincandy.com along with all the other great podcasts on the network. Who's ready for a pod crawl? Yeah, I'm done with my fudge oh rounds, too. Oh, my God, I hate you so much. Let's do this. We can call it, I don't know, say a pod crawl. The pod crawl! Pod crawl! Pod crawl! Pod crawl! Excellent! Insert it deep! Pod crawl! Kind of like a space suppository full of information. It's been around a year or so after Picard was rebirthed as Data's grandpa, and Laris wants to know if Picard is fully functional and programmed with multiple techniques. <laughs> However, he's to give a speech the next day to his new Academy cadets, and as Chancellor of Starfleet Academy, coming in smelling like sex and candy might be unseemly. 
since Dodge is doing some ambassadoring with other synths and Rios is in charge of the newest Stargazer after handing over his old ship to Seven. Dr. Jurati is aboard the Stargazer with Rios, and they are on the outs and fighting like two divorcees who really want to get back in the sack with the other. Raffi and Elner are at the Academy, Elner is the first Romulan to be accepted. Well, the first known Romulan anyway. He and Raffi are assigned to the Excelsior and they all head their separate ways. The Stargazer checks out a rib in space-time and receives a message requesting Picard. Not really having anything else to do apparently, Picard heads out to greet the space rib and when he does, out pops an extra-dimensional Borg ship. The Queen transports aboard the Stargazer, shoots everyone on the bridge, hacks into the ship's computers thanks to the ship being half Borg ship to begin with, and Picard orders the self-destruct. The ship blows up and roll a quick end to the Picard series, credits. Yep, the end. Oh wait, no, no, seems Picard opens his eyes and finds himself back in France, on his estate. Guess heaven was a place on Earth after all. But it turns out it's not heaven after all, because Q creeps up on him like a handsy uncle and explains to Picard that he's still being tested. It turns out Picard is in an alternate future set up by Q, one that involves him as a bloodthirsty general for the Planetary Confederation. Picard is a genocidal maniac in this future and has destroyed and subjugated countless species throughout the galaxy, and is about to do the beheading of a Borg Queen in captivity. The leader of the execution party is none other than President Seven, who finds herself with a tiny little tyrant of a husband. Jurati is a mad scientist in the basement holding the Borg Queen in a stasis cell, and Rios is out swinging the killer blow against the Vulcans. Raffi is head of the secret police and fake captures Elner who is leading the elven resistance on Earth. Picard gathers everyone together at the big fascist fair and tells everyone they need to go back to 1955 to save his family from financial ruin. No, wrong show, they need to go back to 2024 to save his family from homicidal fanaticism. But they need a supercomputer to make the calculations in order to do the Star Trek Four Sun slingshot to go back to the past, and they killed Data in the last season, so where to find one? They decide to break out the Borg Queen and take her back, because they didn't learn a fucking thing from Star Trek First Contact, and thanks to the power of slow-mo, they jump back in time and crash land on the planet. But before they made their time jump, the tiniest tyrant beamed aboard to stop them and shot Elmer in the shoulder, answering the question, how do you get rid of a character nobody really liked from the first season? Since the Borg Queen was jacked into the ship, she sucked the power dry, which shut down the med bay that was keeping Elmer alive, so he dies and his mom not mom Raffi is ready to murder the world because of it. Raffi, Seven and Rios head to Los Angeles where they need to find the MacGuffin to move the plot along while Picard and Jurati try and grill the Borg Queen for info on where the MacGuffin is. Jurati decides it's a good idea to jack into the Queen and Google around her head for the answers, and Picard acts as her emotional support animal while in there. Jurati's psychosis overwhelms the Queen's defenses, and she grabs the info they need, Rios gets deported, because of course he does, and rolled as soon to come Seven and Raffi scissoring through space spin-off we all need. Yes. Credits. <laughs> all right. So season two of Picard episodes one through three is what we'll be discussing this episode. Um, we're back with uh, old man Picard. Uh, he's back on his estate. Apparently uh, retirement just didn't sit with him too well. And he's now the chancellor of Starfleet Academy. So of course the first thing he does as chancellor of Starfleet Academy is go back out into space onto a ship and get himself transported back in time. Well, yeah, he's got a new body. Why not? <laughs> right. So what do you, what, what'd you think body. about these first three episodes? Did it draw you in like the first three episodes of the first season? Um, n- no, not, not as well as it did the first three episodes before. Um, I am slightly intrigued, but I am. I wouldn't lose any sleep if I quit watching. I don't think at the moment uh, there isn't enough there. Uh, there isn't enough there to really hold my gaze, and I think that has to do. The pacing is a little too fast. Yeah, that it they rushed. They rushed through. 24 oh whatever they rushed through the alternate timeline um there there wasn't a lot there and i think it could have i you know i think it's probably because of the number of episodes they're trying to do but i think they could have used an episode there 
to take stock of what was going on instead of, oh, we're here. Oh, look, here's everybody. Let's leave. That's my thought. You? Well, I mean, they're still in, in 2024. No, no, no. I'm talking about when they when they warped to uh, Confederation timeline. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, prior to the time, prior to going back in time, um, I think, I think they were in alternate Earth f- for too short of a time. It was way too fast. Yeah, it was basically an episode that they were in alternate Earth. Yeah. So about 40 well, minutes. Three quarters of an episode, really, because they, they jumped before the end of the episode and crashed. No, they jumped at the beginning of the third episode. Is that yeah, what they the, the Oh, yeah, they jumped away. The cliffhanger at the right. sep- second episode was uh, what's-his-face beamed they, onto the ship, shot Elnor, and then was about to shoot everybody else. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yep, yep. I watched all three all at the same time, so it kind of yeah, bleeds you know, together. It was just a binge yeah. watch. Yeah, it was a b- binge watch. Yeah, so they, they didn't stay. But I don't know how much we really wanted to see of alternate um alternate earth i mean it was well it was it was kind of a mirror uh universe earth and at first i thought they they had transported him to the mirror universe and i was okay we're gonna see like you know evil picard with a goatee we're gonna see evil Girati with a goatee we're gonna see evil seven with a goatee everybody's gonna have goatees and it's gonna well, be a mirror what they universe do in that season. one yeah yeah well no i so I'm not I'm I I think it could have I think it could have used maybe half an episode more. Um it just to me it felt well first off it was convenient and that's one of my quabbles. Um and we can talk about that one later when you get to the quabble section. Um but it felt it felt rushed. I mean, he showed up, he walked around, he found Q and then it was like, okay, I got a plan. Let's leave. You know, there. Yeah, I'll I'll give you that. the 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 first three episodes did feel rushed, and I think we had kind of the opposite reaction in season one, where the first two episodes seemed like it was they they were pretty slow, and you didn't get. Yeah. I mean, you got a lot of like character development and kind of the build up in those those first couple episodes. Um, yeah. But there wasn't a lot that happened. What have you been happened. doing with your life? Yeah, there wasn't a lot that happened. And you're kind of yeah. like, well, you, you need to move the story along. This is only 10 episodes for the season, and you've now wasted you know, 20% of the season just barely establishing you know, who's doing what. Um, but yeah, I'll give you this. It, it, it was fast. I mean, we see Dodge for, what, five minutes, maybe 10 minutes total? Yeah, is she... Is she a character in this? I mean, is is she a player? I don't know. I mean, I, I would think I, I so, but I mean, they show her in the cast, but I haven't, I haven't been able, I haven't, and okay, I haven't looked real hard, but I haven't been able to find anything that says, yeah, she's in the whole thing. Yeah, I'd, or well, she's only in the whatever. first episode so far, and she didn't right. go back in time with them, so I don't think she's right. back in time. Um, unless she's the MacGuffin or somebody she's who the looks watcher. like, yeah, she's there's yeah. somebody that looks like her is the MacGuffin, which I wouldn't put it past them to do that. Yeah, because I mean, they Wikipedia still has a holder of all knowledge, um, still has her listed as a main character uh, in Picard. Yeah, so in fact, she's she's third in the list. So you gotta you gotta um, wonder, and it's either the MacGuffin's either gonna be her or it's gonna be Guinan. It's gonna be one of those two. Oh, we'll see Guinan again. I mean, they made the whole uh, they made it seem like she she'd had a spot on Earth for years. Yeah, because she made she mentioned the whole thing of you know when they went to aid uh, you know explain her age you know yeah. like oh well I yeah, let I found myself that humans, age yeah blah blah yeah, blah yeah whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't like that one I didn't like that explanation I was totally okay with the way they did Q I thought I thought that was a yes that was an easy way to do yes. it okay you sh- he shows up I wish he would have been a little bit younger for just a little bit longer not not like longer in this episode but maybe a f- 
you know, a few minutes or something like that. Get a little banter and then be like, all right, fine. I'm going to make myself look like you because you're a old fart, you know, and then he snaps, right? So spend a little bit more of that CGI money. Right, yeah, some of that de money. Because it was, yeah, because I mean, really, if you blinked, you missed it. You know, if you were looking down, well, if- because cause it wasn't, you know, you hear the voice, he flips over, and then, he's, and then he snaps, right? And he's done. And it's like, man, that was quick. Well, if you blink, you miss the whole Q segment. Anyway, he wasn't in there right. for more than, like, five he minutes. Was not. I wanted he more Q no. to begin with. Yeah. And I doubt we're yeah. going to see Q until towards the end of the season, and probably not for very long. Yeah. I think it, that was just fan service done poorly, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We could be wrong. Could be but wrong. That, I haven't. I haven't watched any but, of it. I purposely not reading. Yeah, but that that also kind of asks the question: How long are they going to be in twenty twenty four? Do you think they'll be in twenty twenty four for the majority of the season, or do you think? I think so. I th- I th- I think at least until until maybe what is this ten episodes again? So maybe five or six. Wow, you think they're going to do? Because it'll be three. So you're thinking they're going to do three to four episodes in 2024? Well, okay, so just reading ahead, um, not reading ahead, but looking ahead at the titles of, of season two, you've got season, uh, you've got episode five is Fly Me to the Moon. So to me, that's kind of, that's kind of still a reference of back then, right? Okay. Um, Two of one, so I don't, I don't know. That's that's a Borg reference. Yeah, so, I'm wondering if Gerardi might start. And I was going to ask that. Do you think there's? Do you think we're going to regret the whole, uh, you know, Borg mind fuck oh, thing? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's going to come it's back come, and bite yeah, them. It's definitely going to come back and bite them in the ass. Yeah. So and then you get monsters and. Mercy, and then Hide and Seek. They haven't announced what the 10th episode is. But, uh, yeah, I don't... It doesn't really tell you much, but, I, but I'm looking at at season, or episode 5, Fly Me to the Moon. That To me, that means, yeah, we're still, we're still in... Or, or we're still in 2024. Maybe. You know, that... that uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to I, see how long they stay in 2024. I I think it's going to be for the majority of the of the thing. I, not knowing what they're doing for this third season, could we see this this being a two season arc? No, I think they'll wrap this up this season. You think? Yeah, so? Yeah, I think so. So what what is season three? Uh, Picard and uh, Laris get it. Get it on th- Boogie yeah, Nights. Yeah, I think so. I think season three is Star Trek Boogie Nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring, bring back all the good characters. Well, see, I heard that. Uh, I don't know if it was for three or two, but I heard Lavar Burton's coming back for a cameo. Yeah, and so is um, uh, and Worf. Worf is coming back. So yeah, yeah, yep. So so I, but I don't know if that was two or three that they did it in, um, but. Maybe they're doing a menage a trois. Maybe. You know, that's three that's a threesome in French. Yeah, we we know. Oh. All right. Yeah, yeah. so it, Moving it'll, on. <laughs> it'll be interesting to see. Um <laughs> Do you think Elnor will be yeah, coming I totally, back? I totally derailed you, didn't I? Well, yeah, I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> I can't believe you fucking did Menage a Trois, and yeah, that was so dumb. It, but I, do you, I pulled it. Do you think? Uh, uh, yeah, do you think they'll bring Elnor back? Uh, you know, so I don't, I don't think he's going to be back for the majority of the season. The only thing I can think of is there's some sort of parallel universe thing happening and maybe he shows up at at the end when it like they time travel back or something like that maybe okay so so the only way i could see that happening is maybe they they figure out what they need to do uh to one to fix 
fix their problem, right? To fix their their um, Gestapo Earth, right? Um, so they figure that out. They fix that. Now they want and and they're like, okay, we fix that that point that Q screwed up, uh, and they want to go back to their time. But then they decide they pull the uh, Marty McFly route and they. Uh, decide to jump prior to the Borg incursion or the Borg teleportation thing or jig. And they do something which then essentially means that they save Elnor, but then you see your future selves and the whole place explodes. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know either. How, and and uh, I, don't I don't know. I don't know how time travel works in this one. It's because uh, they've done it differently. They've done it differently multiple times, right? Well, yeah, so. and that was my next question: was why did they do the sun slingshot again? So in first contact, they didn't do the sun slingshot. They did some kind of, I don't know, tachyon Deflector. particles or something like that. Right? Yeah. Right. Well, so so my guess one the first time they followed a Borg through, um, in in first contact. So and then on the way. back, back they still had all that borg technology you know uh hijacked into their system so maybe they were able to you know they end up using that because the borg the 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 borg were trying to take over the thing and and get back to their own time period after I they at the end of that humanity. movie they said that you know we've got the calculations that we need to to go back supercomputer they had a supercomputer they had data yeah, yeah. So they they figured out how to do it, right? They had the Borg technology stuff, so they were able to make their little transwarp conduit uh, teleportation time travel MacGuffin doohickey. Uh, so they come back. This one, I mean, they didn't. So are you they telling had, me that in, you know, 100 years past when Kirk and them slingshotted around the sun... That the ship's mm-hmm. computer is still dumber than Spock? Mm, well, you know, my guess... My guess is maybe not necessarily dumber than Spock, but... Well, it can't add as fast as Spock. I would think... I would think time travel is against the Prime Directive... So maybe there is some sort of block that keeps them keeps the computer from being able to pinpoint. Uh, they didn't have the prime directive in the Confederation. Oh, that's true. I was thinking it was a Starfleet ship. Nope. Um, Confederate ship. Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. I'm just saying. I mean, I, that it seemed, well, okay, it seemed so, like they were bending over backwards and doing backflips trying to get the Borg Queen on board. Yeah, so so here here's here's what I'm thinking. The Borg Queen knew when and where and what and how, right? Because she has some sort of like temporal memory. Well, yeah, um, all the Borg Queens can communicate. Yeah through time and space and dimension that seems odd but okay right yeah hey i'm just going with what uh, what uh uh seven mccott tits said um and so so she knew where to go she wasn't freely giving up the information so they had to bargain with her right last of her kind endangered species let's do her like we did the dodo bird and just annihilate her um so they kind of needed her to be able to pinpoint the difference between what Spock and she did is Spock, if I remember correctly, they were just trying to get to the past when they could get a whale. They didn't care when, they just went and got a whale. Right. So so that wasn't that big of a deal. And it was a Klingon ship. True. Uh, it doesn't. That doesn't mean anything. But it was a Klingon ship, <laughs> so. so they probably needed Spock because yeah, you don't figure Klingons yeah. have real smart computers. But right, right, right. But but that's what I'm saying is like we, uh, they were trying to pinpoint a spot in in this episode, um, 
whereas Spock and all them were just trying to get a whale, and they didn't care when or where. Well, they cared where, but they didn't care when, so they were just going back. So, I don't know. Of course, the way they made it sound, you know, Spock's like, oh, I programmed the coordinates into the computer. Very good, Spock, let's go. And they went, you know, it wasn't like making calculations on the fly. Right. But maybe that's maybe that's what it is, is, is you know, they were having to make calculations on the fly because um, Little Miss uh, Borg Lady um, was holding that information hostage, you know. She wasn't giving it up, so she's like, you got to take me. Like, we need her. She has to, she's going to have to take us. No, because the whole whole reason they needed her was for the calculations. And to where to go. They didn't know where to go. Uh, Because she never, she never told them. Q told them, or Q told Picard that it happened in 2024. Picard knew. Did? Yeah. Did they? I thought she said, no, 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 no. Q didn't say. Q just said that I, I, uh, that he changed it. The queen is who mentioned when, because because Seven asked her, when did you first uh, uh, feel the anomaly? And she said, 2024. It was the queen that told oh, her when the yeah, anomaly you're right, was. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Q just said, hey, I made a change to uh, for this because it's always a test. One little change made made all the difference, right? So he knew there was a change. He just didn't know when. Okay, so they, they but they had the information that it was twenty twenty four. Yeah, they could have but done they didn't it without know when her. or where. Yeah. No, she I said Los Angeles in twenty twenty four. Well, you know that's twelve months. So do you jump to twenty twenty three and hope you can not make any ripples until sometime in the future for some event that you don't know because she's not telling you. Yeah. So how do you know when you hit that singular event that caused the issue? Well, you just kill the watcher. Do you think it's the watcher <laughs> that they have to kill? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well. Maybe we should watch episode four. Maybe that'll answer all of it because the episode four is watcher. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. figure they're gonna yeah, yeah. find the watcher. So question for you. You know who uh mm-hmm. you know who directed episode three? Yeah, because I'm looking at it right here, Leia Thompson. Yeah, you know who that is? Uh-huh, Marty McFly's That's mom. That's right, Marty McFly's mom yeah. directed episode three. She also directs mm-hmm. episode four. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, my time travel mommy uh, is uh, directing time travel. That's so weird. I am telling you. You know how many pairs of pants I went through? Oh, my God. I don't want to know. Enough. I don't want to know. Enough of them. Enough of them. Yeah, I don't want to know. Yeah. You ready for a quabble? Yeah, let's hear your quabbles. All right. Here's 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 the biggest one. The biggest quabble I've got. All right. So you've got this Borg. You got this Borg that's taken over the ship. Um, obviously the Borg doesn't want to hurt them necessarily because she was stunning them. They even made that mention. Right. She's stunning them. Okay, great. Now all of a sudden the Borg's trying to take over everything. All right, so why is she taking over everything and 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 but like stunning everybody and keeping them uh, keeping them alive? Ponder me this: Why would you do that? Oh, it doesn't matter. Let's blow everything up because my name is Picard, and you can't trust the Borg because I used to be Borg, even though this Borg is from some weird far flung future. Blah blah blah. Initiate self destruct. Right. All right. So, Stargazer initiates self destruct. Okay, who's on the Stargazer? Rios, mm-hmm. Picard, seven oh nine. Yep, Gerardi. That's four. Yep. All right, all right. Good job, Q. You snapped everybody and you transported Picard. Oh wait, then you went ahead and you transported Rios, seven oh nine, Gerardi. Okay, I can understand that. You just went ahead and transported the whole crew. Wait, no, you didn't transport the whole crew. Crew, you just transported four of the crew. All right, so the rest of them are cannon fodder. I can get that. Oh wait, Rafi and Elnor are here. They were on a completely different ship. Yeah, they were on the uh, trans- Excelsior. Yeah, yeah, but let's go ahead and transport them. Why? Why Q? Why would you transport those guys? Right. 
All right, fine, fine. You transport Picard. Picard knows his knows what's going on because Q is like, hey, this is a test. You're going to learn your lesson. Uh, I'm going to transport you here. Yes, you're going to see your same friends and 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 people from ep- from season one, but they're not going to be the same people because I've changed it, and this is a test for you. Oh no, I'm just kidding. I'm old and forgetful. They can remember stuff too. Congratulations. <laughs> What the actual fuck? Yeah, I'm not sure why or the the uh, the reasoning why they transported mm-hmm. all of them. Although he didn't transport Dodge that we know of so far. But, well, Dodge wasn't around there. True. Right. Right. So, so and okay, and I would be able to look past, let's say, seven hundred nine. I could look past that because she has Borg technology and if all he did was make a small well making a small change or he teleported all those people yeah i don't know that's the only thing that i could do is maybe make a concession for seven nine but they got rid of all her borg implants so that doesn't hold up well yeah she never so, got assimilated again, by the borg because picard right. destroyed the borg before they got to him well except for one well yeah but yeah 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 so yeah I don't, I, I don't understand this whole Q thing. Um, where's the rest of by by not by definition, but by what you see by by what has been established, the rest of the crew should be around there somewhere too, all with memory of what happened. Well, except for Q, probably only transported those six. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Why? Well, we don't know. And Picard also mm. kind of said that, you know, he thought that Q was a, a little insane at this point, too. So mm. that he was. He's a little old. <laughs> yeah. He's gone space crazy. Space madness. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, did the, did the Q actually age? He self aged himself to match Picard, but, I mean, do they, do they go senile? I wouldn't think so. I don't know. Well, you know, you did have in that one, um, I think it was a Voyager episode, there was a Q that wanted to die. Oh, yeah, but I mean, that's you know. that's different. So, I I don't know. And apparently Guinan knows uh, Q. Yes. Right, and, and Guinan, or Q is, did I read this somewhere, or did I know this? Q is afraid of Guinan? Well, he said, I think it was the first time that he and Guyanan met or, or saw each other on the Enterprise. He goes, right. oh, you have one of them. You, you need to be careful. Something like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he yeah. expressed caution. You're not sure if he was afraid or if they'd had right. run-ins before. Yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah, we're not sure. Yeah, but yeah, I that that's the biggest thing is... I understand. I understand you want to, you you want to bring in all your normal characters. Great. Let's do it a different way. You use the La Serena, and you have all those characters on the La Serena, and the La Serena gets teleported. Well, but they wanted the happy ending from season one, where everybody was was happy and well adjusted and their careers were moving forward. Rafi was back in Starfleet. Elnor was in Starfleet. Uh Rios got his commission back. Um Seven was doing whatever Seven does, you know, killing people for the hell of it. Um you know, everybody was happy and 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 things were good and then everything goes to shit because of a mysterious Borg. And who do you think the Borg is? Because she had like a full face, shield. right? She had a face covering thing going on. Yeah, I. Oh, you know who? I didn't even think about this because I wasn't even. I didn't really care, but now I care. What if it's Gerardi? You think it's Gerardi? What if it's Gerardi from? Let's just say the future, but let's just say let's just say this little mind meld that uh, she did with the Borg totally fucks her up. The queen takes her over, and and then Gerardi becomes becomes a, a Borg queen, and sh- yeah, 
Possibly. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But why would why would a future Borg come back to the past? I don't know. Maybe to stop them from doing something that's going to fuck up the future. Because okay. the, the, the fact that the Borg queen, whenever she took over the bridge, was just stunning them and not killing them. Right. Makes you, makes think, you think that, that, that she that, was trying to prevent something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's more to this that than meets the or, eye. Or yeah, or the Gerardi thing holds up in the fact that Gerardi's a Borg queen and she still has she still has a little bit cuz it seems like the Borg queens have a little bit of, of humanity. I'm not going to, you know, they've got they've got their own faculties about them, right? They're not just mindless drones. Right. So maybe a little bit of Gerardi's um, Gerardiness <laughs> is still there. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, you know, she's still slightly herself. Um, so she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to hurt her friends. Or more importantly, we're back in the whole Back to the Future thing because again, you know, why not? And. She can't kill herself because if she kills herself, she kills herself. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it works. <laughs> right? So so she decides, hey, I'm going to start stunning people. Yeah, I don't know. My question is, why would Picard set the self-destruct? It wasn't his ship. Because he's the Chancellor of Starfleet Academy, right? That means that she has he has the override codes for every ship by default. No, that's well, not he what that is means. an admiral. No, he, he is, is an, an admiral, admiral. But Rios was the captain of the ship, right? But but if an admiral is there, wouldn't an admiral take precedent over? I mean, as far as like like not unless the, the computer the, goes, no, not unless the captain gave the admiral control of the ship. But but okay, in my mind, those computers know. Okay, you know they have bio retinal or whatever. You know you got your bio bio retinal f- scans or whatever. You've got your bio scan, so it knows. Okay, Admiral of Starfleet is here. I can accept commands from him or them, right? And so it accepts the command. Yeah, but still, whereas the- whereas a captain, a captain. If a captain goes to another ship, the captain of that ship has to expressly tell the computer, this captain can make decisions as well. They are in charge or, you know, or what have you. Give them authority, even though they're not the captain of this particular ship. An admiral can take over whatever ship they feel like. No, I don't think that's the way it works. Because if you remember in TNG, uh, even when admirals came on board... He was still in command of the ship, and the one time that an admiral actually took over, uh, did he? Oh, I can't remember that episode Look, it's, now. It's been a few years, right? Right. I mean, that was that was a few years ago. Yeah, so but they're not going to change they've, that they've kind upgraded of process. It. No. Yeah, no, they've upgraded no. it. Yeah, yeah, they did. Look, it's a board. It's a board computer now, <laughs> right? It's got Borg parts in it. They're, all bets are off. Yeah, stop being an apologist. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just trying to make sense of this uh, crazy, crazy episode uh, season that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> right? All right. So, yeah. You got a haiku for us this week? I do. Uh, I titled this bad boy "Reengage" because that's all I could come up with. Future Borg contact. Q fucking with the timeline. Need new pair of pants. Oh my god, you're so gross. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! You got awards this week. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, I do. All right, who's... I wrote them down. Oh, I, good. I told you, I, I always write them down. Mm, I don't believe you. Yeah. I don't believe you. Who's got your black lung? 
Elnor. <laughs> okay. Uh, so mine's gonna go to uh, mine's gonna go to Rios for keeping his cigar. Dude, he smoked the cigar on a Starfleet vessel. I know it was do you great. Think, oh, do you think that's a non-cancerous cigar? You think you think they take all the bad addictive things out of it, and it's just like uh, it's like uh, future vaping? Ah, uh, maybe extra nicotine. Yeah, you figure that they would do something like that. Right, yeah. right. So Rios gets mine. What about your right. uh, head lush? Oh, I gave it to Picard and Guinan. Yeah, yeah. Because they 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 popped out the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it to Guinan because she. Uh, well, she asked if they wanted the good stuff, or if he wanted the good stuff. Mm-hmm. And he said no, but then she went ahead and grabbed the good right. stuff after she found out what he wanted to talk right. about. So yeah. All right. So mine's gonna go to Guinan for popping out the good stuff. Hmm. Uh, what about your player? Uh, my player, you know, I'm going to give it to uh, Loris. Really? Okay. Um, I'm giving it, well, so well, let's go on different ways, but I want to give it to Loris and the fact that, you know, she's she's trying. She's trying to get Picard, and she almost had it. And then and then Patrick Stewart was like, no, no, I can't do it. I feel funny I in my it. pants. My, yeah, yeah. What is this? What is this? Uh, uh, ooh. Yeah, I got some movement in my loins. Can't make that. Can't do that. I'm a prim and proper Frenchman that speaks English. <laughs> All right, so uh, British Frenchman. Mine is going to go to Rafi. All right, yeah. Because when they were up there in that tower, um, and they got uh, caught by the guards and told to leave, you know, Seven was being very straightforward, and uh, Rafi came up with the uh, the she's my partner oh, yeah. uh yeah my wife mm-hmm. angle and uh this is this is where we took our first picture uh when we mm-hmm. first got together and we wanted to do it again a celluloid celluloid uh photograph yeah. whatever, whatever she called it yeah <laughs> celluloid image yeah celluloid image yeah there it's you go it's just called a picture it's just a picture huh? so yeah yeah so i'm gonna give it to rafi for uh getting uh Getting seven of nine on board with uh, with the scissoring in space idea. Yeah, perfect. All right, your uh, purple hippo. So purple hippo could be a tie, or it could just be one person. We don't know yet, but I'm going to go ahead and just give it to Girardi. Okay, because it could be Girardi or the Borg. I don't know which. Are they the Are they two different entities now, or the same? That's a good question. We don't know because they mind fucked each other. That's right. Pretty good. Yeah, I'm on- I did like, I did like, I want to say, I did like how they did that whole mind meld thing in terms of like, like her voice was coming out of hit uh, out of the Borg and the Borg was coming out of her. Yeah. And like, I, I thought that was, that was pretty neat and kind of clever. That was cool. Yeah. Mine's going to go to Girardi as well uh, okay. for walking around in the mind of a Borg. Yeah. I, I don't even think, I, I don't even think she needed to walk around in the mind of the Borg. She seemed pretty like screwed up when she was the the basement doctor. Yeah, you got to wonder if you know, the Borg is worse off for that mind meld now. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Girardi is a kind of a fucked up lady. Yeah, so you, she, you got to really wonder is. how much therapy the Borg queen's going to need. Oh, shit. Do they have Borg therapists? Well... They're gonna need to now. They're gonna. They're gonna need to. <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's who came out through the future. It's. It's the therapist. She's like, oh, I gotta <laughs> end this shit, please. All because of this thing. My queens have been so fucked up. We can't. We can't let Gerardi's consciousness into yeah. the Borg hive. She how, fucks everything you, up. How do you? How do you? Dis, how do you? How do you defeat the Borg? Uh, just plug Gerardi into it. They'll just. <laughs> They'll just self suicide. All right. Final thoughts. What are we doing next week? No, I got no final. So okay, so I'm on the fence, but I will watch it. Um, well, yeah, you have to. We've we've started know, the series I have to. now. We got to finish. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm on the. Eh. It didn't pull me in near as near as well as as the first season did. Um, the first season, while it was slower at the beginning, there was enough of that Romulan, 
um, espionage thing that was happening, uh, and the fact that you were seeing characters that you hadn't seen in a while, right. Seven of Nine and Picard, and um, the fact that they had captured a Borg cube and were were taking people, uh, liberating people, it was enough there to make me want to keep watching it. Yeah, and the intrigue with slow. what was going on with Dodge and, and her sister, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was enough there to keep me going. This one, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's a little snippet there, but I think, I think if it doesn't do anything by episode four, I wouldn't be hurt about not ha- not being able to watch it again. Uh, we'll have to see what episode four does. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, because that's the watch. Uh, well, it the title is Watcher, so hopefully that we get a few answers, right? Of what we're what what are we trying to do for this season? Because we don't know. So I have nothing invested in this other than, okay, this is another time travel show. Um, or uh, it's an extended time travel episode. Yeah. They'll get back at some point. Yeah. Well, so I, I don't know. I, I don't think this one is as strong as what the first season is. And I don't know if that's because the first season was a lot of that unknown or nostalgia feeling. I'm not getting that same type of feeling from this one. I could care less about Guinan. Um, I, Q, eh, he wasn't in there for very long to really pose a threat. Yeah, I'm on the same side as you are. It, it didn't really capture my attention as much as the first season. Um, mostly because, I mean, there's not just a ton going on. It seemed really fast paced, but yeah, there. It went nowhere fast. Right. It went nowhere yeah. fast. Mm hmm. Uh, there's some confusing elements in there. There's not that much of a mystery to kind of keep me drawn in. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the next three episodes are going to be. And that's what we're going to review on next episode is season two of Picard. We're going to uh, review episodes four through six. And then after that, we'll review episodes five through ten. Or, I'm sorry, seven through ten. So, Oh, we're doing four on the last yeah, one? Yeah, four. Oh, so much more. I, I am, I am ex, not excited, but I am intrigued to see what Franks does. or Because uh, he's uh, Jonathan Frax's Frank, Frakes. 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 I was saying Franks, and I was like, no, that's not right. Then I said Frax, and I was like, no, yep. that's Battlestar. Frakes. There we go. Uh, Jonathan Frakes is the uh, director for five and six. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll so, be it'll be interesting to see what he does. I, I yeah, I've liked he had the some shows good ones. That he's directed so far. So. Right, he had some good ones in Picard last last season. Yep. Uh, so. All right, well that does it for this episode. Our intro and outro music is "Welcome Home" by Cambo. Pod crawl music is "Snack Mix" by Machette. If you like the show, please rate and review us on iTunes. You can leave us feedback on our Discord channel at smokinganddrinkinginspace.com forward slash discord. On Twitter at status underscore podcast, or you can email us at smoking and drinking in space yeah, at outlook.com. Out. If you'd like to throw a few nickels our way, you can become a Patreon supporter by going to smoking and drinking in space.com forward slash Patreon. And make sure to visit Creative Brain Candy for more great shows and other creative works at creativebraincandy.com. For this week, I'm Jason. All right. 709, Borg Queen, Gerardi. Borg scissoring through space. Let's do it. <laughs> You're an idiot. We'll talk to you next episode.